Hello teachers, thank you Director Raquel for allowing me to spend just a few moments to share a brief message with you. I am so sorry that I was not able to be there with all of you today. Uh, I would have loved to have been there but my schedule doesn't allow. But I would like to share just a brief message. I've written some thoughts down and I'm going to share those with you. I want to talk to you about leadership and the fact that leadership is imitating Christ. All of us have a great responsibility in our ministry with children to make sure that we are leading children toward Christ. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 11 chapter 1, Be imitators of me, just as I also am an imitator of Christ. People can never be biblical leaders and truly mature until they come to realize that God has called them to be examples to others. As the Lord Jesus pointed out, a disciple is not greater than his teacher, but everyone, when fully trained, will be like his teacher. And Jesus wants us to be fully trained and to be like him. In that context, the Lord was showing his disciples and showing us today that one's true spirituality or godliness or lack of godliness is revealed in our actions and that such actions will of necessity influence others either for good or for evil. Students, sons, daughters, and the flock tend to emulate their leaders, parents, guardians, teachers, or heroes. The tendency is for us to shy away from this responsibility and reality, but in order to be truly mature and a leader, one must accept this as a reality of leadership, and the reality is God has called you as leaders. So let me just share with you three or four principles of leadership that I find from this passage in 1 Corinthians. First of all, being a godly leader, a godly example, is not an option. It is commanded in Scripture. This verse in 1 Corinthians and several other passages in the Scriptures deal with this issue. We are to be leaders, godly examples. Principle number two, we have no choice in being an example, in being a leader of some kind. And we have no choice in the fact that we have an impact on those around us, especially children. But we do have a choice in the kind of example, the kind of leadership, the kind of impact we provide. Someone is going to follow us and be influenced by us. The questions are, do we know where we're going? Are we providing the kind of example that will enhance their lives? Or are we like the blind leading the blind? Motion in itself does not mean direction. Activity in itself never means effectiveness. What is effective is imitating Christ. Principle number three. We need Christian maturity that provides people with real, honest-to-God examples of authentic, Christ-like living. People want to see people who love Jesus. Effective ministry and leadership to others is often equated with such things as a dynamic personality or a talent or giftedness or training or enthusiasm. But these things alone are inadequate for leadership. Much more is needed. In the Bible, the qualities that lead to effective ministry are found in the elements of spiritual character. In the character of Christ, reproduced in us by the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Look at the disciples. How would, how many, how would you like to launch a worldwide campaign with people like Peter and his brothers? Yet with these common, average, ordinary, uneducated men, Jesus launched a campaign that has spanned the globe and turned the world upside down, or rather, right side up. Was this because of their unique and imaginative, imaginative methodology? Was it because of their talent? No. It was because these common men spent time with Jesus. They knew the Lord, and they began to experience his life and his qualities of godliness. He took common men and made them into great men who became spiritual leaders because they were experiencing him through the power of the Spirit of God. And you have that opportunity to spend time with Jesus 
He can take you and me, average, common, ordinary people, and make us great leaders. Principle number four. Mature Christians and leaders have a responsibility to maintain a consistent example. This is a constant theme of the Bible. We have the power of the Word that we read and study and meditate and live on. But there's also the spiritual life, the, the Holy Spirit, who brings spiritual change in the lives of people as they see us live a life of godly example. This truth is strongly taught in 1 Corinthians 2, 1 through 12. In those verses, Paul rehearsed or recalled uh, the manner of life that he and his team lived out among the Thessalonians. Let me just read it to you. For you yourselves know, brothers, that our visit with you was not without result. On the contrary, after we had previously suffered and we were treated outrageously in Philippi, as you know, we were emboldened by our God to speak the gospel of God to you in spite of great opposition. For our exhortation didn't come from error or impurity or an intent to, to deceive. Instead, just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, so we speak, not to please people, but rather God who examines our hearts. For we never use flattering speech, as you know, or had greedy motives. God is our witness. And we didn't seek glory from people, either from you or from others. Although we could have been a burden as Christ's apostles, instead we were gentle among you, as a nursing mother nurtures her own children. We cared so much for you that we were pleased to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own lives, because you had become dear to us. For you remember our labor and hardship, brothers, working night and day so that we would not burden any of you. We preached God's gospel to you. You are witnesses, and so is God, of how devoutly, righteously, and blamelessly we conducted ourselves with you believers. As you know, like a father with his own children, we encouraged, comforted, and implored each one of you to walk worthy of God, who calls you into his, into his own kingdom and glory. Notice the parenting terms Paul used to describe his leadership among the Thessalonians. Like a mother nurturing her children. Like a father encouraging, comforting, imploring his children. As teachers and leaders, we have a responsibility to care for those students, to love them, to nurture them, to encourage them, to implore them to walk a manner worthy of God. Those are four powerful principles, but there are three problems that we face every day that threaten our leadership. First, there is the problem of distinctiveness. What I mean here is the issue of living a life so we truly show that what we are, our character, is distinctively the result of knowing and walking with Christ. But sometimes what Christians are speaks so loudly that it completely turns people off or puts them in reverse. If our lives are not what they should be, others will not only want not want to follow us, they will become turned off by who we are. When a Christian's life is contrary to what he or she says, it indicates one of two things. Either we are unreal or Christ is. Problem number two, the problem of direction. Some people will follow us. In this case, not so much in what we say, but in the way we live, in our priorities, our values, our attitudes, as well as our actions. If our lives are not what they should be, we lead people away from Christ and the life he has called them to live and experience and enjoy. Problem number three is the problem of definition. By definition, I mean giving a clear reason for the way we live. Not just with our life, but with our voice. As Christians, 
if our lives are different, as they should be, and we never let others know why we are different, we have still failed in being the kind of godly leaders that Jesus calls us to be. Peter, that same ordinary common fisherman, uneducated, but turned into a great leader by Christ himself, said this in 1 Peter 3, verse 15, Set Christ apart as Lord in your hearts, and always be ready to give an answer to anyone who asks about the hope you possess. Because of the power of our example, and the way one's life either negatively or positively influences others, the scripture repeatedly addresses this vital responsibility. Christian leaders are to be models for others to imitate. In truth, every believer's life is to become a source of motivation and direction for others. We are to be a picture of reality, a proof that Jesus Christ saves and changes lives so we can become a powerful magnet that draws others to Christ. I am praying that our faculty will be like a strong magnet that draws students to the Lord Jesus Christ. So we conclude again with Paul's words, be imitators of me, just as I also am of Christ. God bless you. Have a great year. I look forward to growing in the Lord along with you and leading students to know Jesus.